Good. Hi, um, I'm Josh Poinbuff. I work for Red Hat. I'm on the uh, core kernel team. Um, work on a variety of security and, and x86 related things. Um, Spectre, speculative execution type mitigations, live kernel patching, um, kernel unwinding. Um, but uh, today I'm going to talk about um, OBJ tool. So um, this will is not really a like a big presentation. It's hopefully going to have some discussion. So if you have questions or comments, feel free to jump in. And um, unless we start running out of time, because I do need to get to the problem statement kind of halfway through. So is there a keyboard sh shortcut? Uh, I think the arrow keys work. Otherwise, you can click at the bottom. Yeah, there we go. All right. So um, OBJ tool is a kernel specific tool. Um, it reverse engineers the control flow graph of compiled objects. Um, it performs various validations and modifications to those objects. And um, in general, the, the overall goal is to um, improve the robustness and, and security of the kernel. So it has several features. Um, the only ones I'm going to discuss here are the ones that are related to this uh, control flow graph, which it um, reverse engineers. So the original feature that that inspired OBJ tool was this first one, which is um, stack unwinding metadata validation is basically validates uh, frame pointer rules um, with the goal of making live patching, uh, live kernel patching um, safe. Uh, it, it relies on on reliable uh, stack tracing. Um, and then this work was extended to add the uh, orc uh, unwinder. So as it's very similar to uh, what Indu presented with our CTF frame. It's a, it's a simplified um, version of the uh, of dwarf unwinding. Um, and then there's uh, there's a few other features that also rely on this um, reconstructed control flow graph. Uh, one of them is uh, SMAP validation. This is Intel um, supervisor mode access prevention. Um, it's a security feature that the CPU provides. It prevents the uh, the kernel from um, accessing user space memory. And uh, what OBJ tool does is kind of validate that this feature is always enabled except for um, user copy, copy to user, copy from user. Otherwise, this feature is um, always enabled. And uh, another feature, so both of these last two features were added by uh, Peter Zilstra. Um, also, Thomas Gleichsner worked on this last one too as well. Um, no inst validation. Uh, what this one does is um, it ensures that in certain like critical um, sections of code where you don't want unwanted uh, function calls, profiling or, or um, instrumentation being added in the function. Um, so this uh, just kind of enforces, validates those rules and makes sure that there's no um, you know, surprising function calls being inserted in certain places. So I've gotten this question a lot, like why? Um, why does OBJ tool uh, reverse engineer the control flow graph of the compiler from starting from the object? Um, so the main reason is related to uh, the kernel um, has ASM, a lot of like custom assembly and, and inline assembly that does a lot of interesting things. Um, and uh, and those are really kind of blind spots for the tool chain um, as far as understanding the, the full uh, control flow of the kernel. Um, one, so one potential solution for much of that is manual CFI annotations. 
I mean, we used to we used to do that before we had um, live patching, but um, but uh, we had a lot of problems with those um, keeping them correct, and uh, they were always kind of half broken and and uh, really difficult to maintain, um, especially with a lot of the creative uses we have with uh, in with assembly and inline assembly. So. Um, we eventually kind of gave up on that approach, especially when we needed live patching and um, OBJ tools has, has helped with that. So, and, uh, and other reasons why we need this um, control flow graph is this, uh, these other features I mentioned, the, uh, the SMAP validation and the no inst validation, which are um, very, you know, kernel specific. And uh, tool, you know, tool chain doesn't really understand those those things. So, um, so OBJ tool has actually been doing this for maybe five years or so, and it's been it's pretty good at it. It's it's uh, very good at it, but it has to hack around certain things, um, it, it, it has trouble with a few places. One of them is um, the detection of, of no return uh, function uh, function call sites. So after the, uh, the, the call site um, to, a, to a function that doesn't return, uh, the compiler optimizes out the, uh, the instructions after the call. And this kind of throws OBJ tool for a loop because um, it, you know, it really kind of needs to know that. So that's one challenge is the, the detection of such um, no return functions. Uh, another challenge is uh, the detection of, of jump tables. So um, the biggest example of this would be uh, this like C switch statements. Um, the compiler often um, converts or compiles such switch statements to like an indirect branch and uh, and a jump table. So it's like a list of text addresses that the indirect branch will will jump to. Um, so again, OBJ tool has a hard time kind of reliably um, uh, construct reconstructing that that flow. And we've, we've we have it working. It's been working for several years, but it's like pattern matching. Um, it's really kind of a hack, and it really only works for x86. Um, we tried it on ARM64, and it was even much harder. So, um, and probably impossible from what we could tell. So, um, so that's pretty much the problem statement. Um, Basically, I'm proposing to help solve this issue. Um, I propose that the compiler um, can give us some kind of hints to kind of annotate this, the jump tables and the no return functions um, to kind of help us recover that uh, control flow information. So, um, I sent out kind of a more detailed proposal to the uh, um, Linux tool chains mailing list. Uh, this is kind of a very high level overview of what I sent out. Um, There's a lot of discussion about details, but this is really kind of just the important thing for this for this discussion. Um, so, for example, there's a F annotate no return flag which uh, creates an ELF section. It's not allocatable, it's just for tool, other tooling to read, and it, it, uh, it references all the, uh, the no return functions and, uh, and call sites, or, or the call sites, depending on how we implement it. But um, so OBJ tool would just read this and it would help it kind of fill in the, the gaps. Um, and then similarly, there'd be an F annotate jump table uh, flag, which creates an ELF section, describes all the jump tables in the file, um, 
kind of tells tells OBJ tool where the um, indirect branch is associated with with the jump table and where the jump table itself is. So um, if there's more details discussed on the mailing list, but this is this is pretty much the, at a high level um, what I'm proposing. So I was going to say for the no return case um, for ARM64, this is not as useful as some other options. One of the things I would really like to have instead of this is just to have a tr to have the option to have a trap instruction placed immediately after any call to a no return function, because that also means it will catch problems at runtime if we have a no return function that actually returns somehow. Uh, and it also means that we can guarantee very trivially that every return will return to the middle of a function rather than the next one. It gets rid of an edge case where the next instruction is in another function. And I think on that thread, someone said that feature does already exist. So that might get rid of that problem by construction. And I imagine that it will only be a small amount of additional instructions in the entire kernel. Yeah, that was brought up. That idea was brought up with a trap right after the recall. Um, and the one thing I'm not clear on is, is if OBJ tool has enough information to figure out the reason for that trap because there's other reasons for traps. So it's, it's not clear to me yet whether we would still need a sanitation, but yeah, oh. that is a useful feature to have that. Yeah. But, but like if we could get a well defined set of traps that use for different things, I think that would help. <laughs> yeah. Do we have any compiler folk around? Because one fear I would have with the with the F annotate jump table data is that the format of the jump table and the exact structure and the way it's used could change over time. Because you could have relative jumps, absolute jumps, all the all sorts of things. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, there was some talk about future proofing the uh, the format of the elf section. Um, we could either, like, there was some suggestion that we could point directly to the jump table, or we could kind of rewrite it in a way that's um, easier to read and also maybe more future proof because it doesn't um, depend on the jump table being in a certain existing format. I did a brief search for prior art for jump tables. Um, I suspected this is a similar issue to a utility in the LLVM tree called Bolt, which is post link optimization and sure enough on AR64 they also had in heuristics and in, in in precise heuristics for trying to determine the jump table problem so I'm guessing they may be extremely interested in, in potentially working together on something that is um, maybe code base agnostic and could solve the problem for for both uh, us and them kind of thing so I'm happy to uh, we had the presenter bolt at LPC last year, virtual, so we could probably, you know, reach out to them and, and, you know, maybe at least at the very least discuss the problem and try to figure out, you know, what might a solution look like that is um, makes everyone happy, kind of thing. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. And I think another talk earlier as well today alluded to no return functions being problematic, kind of thing. And so it's to me, it's kind of the question that I have is like, is this something that should be encoded in Elf somewhere in a symbol table in a custom section with a custom format? Should it be in dwarf kind of thing? And I think to me, the question is always um, surely other people have a similar problem and how can we make solutions as generic as possible so that they solve our problems in kernel space, but also, you know, someone in user space surely has the same issue kind of thing like that. So on that no return thing, right? So the thing that we talked in the morning was more on um, on what the user has stated in their high level language. So which means that if they say this is a no return function, then you want it to be reflected somehow so that ABI analysis like tools can use that information. But I think the the requirement or the you know the complete set of no return functions or this the the requirement of obj tool with, with respect to no return is wider correct you just don't need the this 
the OBJ tool just doesn't need only the ones that have been marked as no return using an attribute by the user, but also the ones that the compiler deems as, or the compiler later identifies as no return, right? So okay. this is wider and which needs, which needs something more than just annotations that we were thinking in the morning, which could be in an else section or maybe in debug info. I, I, yeah, that part is still. Um, yeah, that's uh, right. Um, yeah. Compiler. It doesn't only depend upon the no return annotation. Yes. There are other, um, you know, heuristics or whatever that it uses to decide to, that it knows that this function doesn't return. So sometimes it's kind of an implicit no return um, attribute. So yeah. yeah, the typical problem with object tool has is that it can't tell the difference between a no return and the compiler just figuring it should stop code gen. It should stop what? I didn't catch the end of that. Uh, code generation. Sometimes the compiler just gives up and stops code gen in the middle uh, due to various compiler bugs. Or it was not the yeah. yeah, we have found a few bugs where the compiler just gives up and just moves on to the next function. Um, <laughs> so, but, yeah, yeah, we've, we've reported, yeah. A lot of those have been undefined behavior in the source code. Yeah. And those end up being turned into unreachable blocks. And that kind of shreds the control flow. Those get rotated to the end of the function, and then we potentially have a jump that looks like a fall through to the next function. So, like, even the discussion on the list about, like, well, could you turn those into trapping instructions? Yes. But it may not disambiguate the no return function case because you could still have UB in your function that leads to a similar case. So you, you'll get the trap, it has nothing to do with no return. Does that actually matter? Because what we actually care about isn't that the user explicitly annotated as no return, we just care that you can't return it, you can't forget the trap. <laughs> so I think that distinction might not matter for the use case of reliable stack trace, which is why we have this stuff in the kernel. That's true, that's true. So maybe that, yeah. yeah. Once, I mean, it would be OBJ tools analysis would be slightly different because it would actually execute the UD2, but it would stop there because it would see oh we're, we're trapped. So the end result is basically the like, same. Like all the fall through warnings that we've gotten from this from Obj tool, um, like we are able to uh, avoid those. I, I'm not sure that's the correct term, but like internally we have like an internal compiler flag for it. So it was interesting to see the discussion on the list that said. Like, no, no, there is now a flag for it kind of thing because it makes it so that I can give it a name and wrap it easily. Because I've been very strict about avoiding like compiler internal flags in kbuild because like I don't want to be mucking around with the compiler internals kind of thing. Um, so I think that's something I can wrap in Clang probably pretty quickly and have, have that at least. Um, but I, I, I guess I don't know if there's a, we do that and then no return problems go away or if there's more to the problem kind of thing, um, but maybe that's one of the two, at least pretty quickly. Hmm. Okay, any... Uh... So, what is problematic about jump? Repeat. What is what is that problematic about jump tables when it comes to reconstruct the co the flow control graph? So, it, OBJ tool reconstructs control flow by following the branches. Yeah, and it tracks it's like for example the state of the stack at the time. So um, the jump table it needs to know um, if it follows that branch it expects the same stack state there, but if it kind of falls through and doesn't follow that branch, it might. Um, get there a different way with a different stack state. So okay, I see. Yeah. Okay, thank you.